welcome here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, the 19th of January. I hope everyone's keeping well and safe. And uh, the agenda is uh, quite succinct today, so uh, I'm sure the meeting will go fine. Um, can I ask for apologies for please? Sorry, uh, Paula, I can't hear what you're saying. I don't know. Something's wrong with the quality of your mics. Yet I'm only hearing sort of every third word. We're in a different room. So I don't know if I come a bit closer, perhaps. I'll see if it makes a difference if I come a bit closer. <clears throat> Is that any better, Leslie? That's a bit better. The, there's something funny going on. That that it that some some of the words are getting slightly cut off. But we'll, we'll carry on, and I'll, I'll let you know if I'm really struggling. Thank you. I have a sec. I don't think I can get any closer. Otherwise, yeah. I'd be compromising the. And the distance in road. Is that any better? That's better. Thank you. Probably closer to Jeremy's um, PC. Okay, if I can ask for apologies for absence then, please. Uh, apologies from Councillor Eric and Kushner. <coughs> Agenda item two any disclosures of interest, please? Yes, I have a disclosure of interest on the sickness absence update. I was medically retired from Swansea Council in October 2019, so I will actually appear in those stats. Okay, thank you, Julie. Any other declarations? I'm um, simply just suggested that everyone mute their mics. You can ensure the mics are muted until you're invited to, to speak. I've got a Eric hand has up. raised a hand, Chair. I give her apologies, she's attending. Okay. She's down as a Okay. Erica, we've got you down as an attending now, if that's what you're raising your hand for. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, if we can move on to the minutes of the meeting of the 8th of December for, for accuracy and then if we can get um, hands up for approval. Um, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five and page six. Um, are you all content that those minutes are an accurate reflection in the meeting? And can I have hands up to approve them, please? Are we happy to approve them? Councillor Peter Black, yeah. And Councillor Jeff Jones, yeah. And Councillor Mike Lewis. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're now moving on to the employment of agency staff update. And I believe Adrian Child is attending to deliver the paper. Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's, a, it's a really sort of short paper in response to the um, the follow up uh, audit uh, reports that was un obviously undertaken by the audit team. Um, the audit report um, contained um, some areas where um, there was still non-compliance with uh, with the policy. I have to say, in, in my opinion, small numbers, one out of, of ten sampled in some cases. Um, and in response to that, um, as as, de as is detailed in the report, we are following up with with those uh, areas that have not um, fully complied with uh, with the audit uh, committee um, findings. Uh, uh, so that's a, a particular action that we are taking on board to to ensure that in future those areas comply with the, comply with the policy. Um, but as I say, I have to say that there there are relatively small numbers. I would suggest in terms of non-compliance in that area. 
Um, the other area where there was an action identified from last time was the, the um, review and update of the um, agency worker policy. That policy has now um, gone through um, a, leg a legal review, um, uh, which is an update from the re from what was stated in the report. It's now gone through a legal review and it's now with our heads of service for them to be consulted on prior to consultation with trade unions and uh, uh, a subsequently approval by our JCC of a revised agency worker policy. Um, there was another action identified last year with regard to off contract agency arrangements and as part of the revised uh, agency worker policy, um, those um, uh, arrangements have been tightened up, so to speak, to ensure that um, uh, where contracts are placed that are outside a normal contractual uh, or a normal uh, arrangements with our recognised contractors, there is a sort of a, 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 a firmer process in place so that managers engage with procurement to ensure that they comply with the um, the uh, arrangements for for engagement of of, of agency workers. Um, in addition, uh, we would we have continued to um, uh, issue reminders to managers with regard to to their agency workers. Um, and also as a result of this agency worker policy, re, uh, agency worker audit, as we did la last year and we've done again this year, we've sent a, a, a wider reminder to all heads of service to ensure that they comply with the policy. Um, so really that's a sort of quick summary of the, of, of the, the paper that was submitted. Thank you for that, Adrian. Um, are there any questions? I can see Councillor Peter Black in the first hand. Councillor Black. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I mean, the, the report says that five of the nine recommendations have not been complied with, which is concerning. It may well be that some of those non-compliance issues are, are minor, but there still is, you know, more than 50% which aren't being met. And I think it's quite, it'd be quite useful to have uh, further reports on this and, and proper monitoring. And I'm particularly interested in seeing a comparison, say, between when we first had this audit and uh, maybe at some suitable time in the future so we can clearly see uh, and the impact of these new policies on on the employment of agency workers I mean, i've got nothing against agency workers but it does it is very expensive and of course it does undermine existing full-time staff and if we can put full-time staff into place instead then that is obviously better for the authority and better for those staff so i i do think we need some more work on this we do need to see more reports on this in the future so we can keep on top of it Okay. I support that, Councillor Black. I don't know whether you want to respond to that, Adrian, or let the other questions yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't really intended to sort of diminish the, the findings of the, of the report in any way. Um, you're quite right, uh, Councillor Black, that, you know, that, that there are, um, out of the, the recommendations, there are a number that, that, that haven't been met. However, that my interpretation of this is, and having clarified this with the, the auditor concerned, so for example, in one area, um, there was the sample, the, the, the report came back that um, um, the, the recommendation was not implemented, and that was on the basis of a sample of 10. There was one out of the 10 that didn't apply the policy. So I, I, I agree in terms of, you know, the overall scheme of things, it looks as though, you know, the, a number of the recommendations haven't been applied. But if you look at the look at the numbers of uh, or the samples of of uh, of, uh, of um, that were undertaken, in many instances, one out of ten what um, samples weren't, weren't implemented. In 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 with regard to approvals, three out of ten weren't implement weren't implemented. And as I say, in those areas where there's not been compliance. We are following that those that those up. I do take your point uh, um, in respect of you know regular reviews of this. Okay, if you can respond then, I, 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 I'll respond to that as well. And sure, Councillor Blackwood too. Um, Jim Davis is next hand up. Thank you. Um, one one point on the on the report. Um, there was no response from one service. So I was wondering whether that was escalated to audit committee or to the director for them to ensure that the audit was um, was treated with due um, seriousness. Uh, 
Do you know if it was escalated to audit committee? Um, well, I don't know if the audit committee, audit team themselves um, uh, did that. I, um, yeah, that would be one for Simon, Simon, I think. Yeah, thanks, Julie. Um, this, just to give some context, this follow was actually completed on the 11th of January, so it's fairly newly completed. Um, I've seen the outcome. I haven't got the detail in front of it at the moment, but I can chase that up for you, Julie, if that's okay. Yeah. I'll have to have a look at it at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Perhaps you can let me know. But it was in relation to the original report, not to the follower. Oh, okay, and yeah. one one comment that I'd like to uh, to pick up on from uh, Councillor Black, which I, I totally agree with. The original report, terms of reference, um, said that you were going to look at material business risks, but there was no root cause analysis of why the agency workers were employed in the first place. And I would like, if, if you're doing future reviews, for that to be included, because I think it's very important to ensure that the resources of the council are being used uh, most economically and effectively. Yeah, no problem, Julie. And what we'll have to do, obviously, because this is a highly contentious issue, uh, we've done the follow up and we have some, seen some non compliance already in the follow up review. It could be the case that we have to do a full review again in the next financial year, 2021 22. So we could build that into the scope of the audit for 2021 22. OK, thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Sarah Anderson, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Peter Black uh, already asked the question about the recommendations. Um, and I can remember bringing this up um, many years ago as well about agency staff. But I do understand. I think we got to take a little bit in, uh, in respect of COVID. I do under I know that um, the bin lorries are struggling with staff with sickness and all that. So they are having to use agency. But I understand that, but I do agree with Peter. The recommendations haven't been uh, followed up. Okay, thank you, Councillor Anderson. Uh, Councillor Mike White. Yes, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, as I say. As we've already pointed out, lots of these staff are obviously employed in frontline services, which we've got to use, obviously be operational on a daily basis. Uh, clearly, I think what what we need to do really here is to comply with the obviously the recommendations. Is that the company or companies that we are using that we tighten it up with them so they are fully aware of you know that. Of, of the the the, the actual procedures that that the council um will, will, wants to operate under, so that both parties are aware of of when they are taking staff on that 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 they know that all all the appropriate documentation uh, has to be in place. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on this paper, please? I could just make a couple of comments though, and I would wholeheartedly support um, the comments made that this report needs to come back at a future point. And I would suggest that not too far a distant way. Um, I'd like to see something no later than June. And if I could ask in that report, if we could have some context within the paper, I think we need to see how much spend is being incurred in, in regards to agency costs. I asked for the, um, the total costs to date um, before the meeting, and they are significant. And we've also got significant numbers of sickness uh, and absence and lost days to sickness across the council, which could be relative to the cost of the agency. So it's an area I think of great risk to the council and great cost to the council. And I think, as I say, Adrian, if when you present the paper, um, the next time, as well as um, identifying areas of non-compliance, if we could have the total cost being incurred in those areas and the associated lost sickness days also. Um, we, we need to understand the risks associated with this and um, the reminders going out to heads of service to be compliant with the policy. Um, I suggest looking at the figures is not necessarily working that effectively. 
Um, but we need to understand as an audit committee the context around it all. And we are unable to do that with the details currently in this paper. So if no later than June, if we can have an update as regards to the level of compliance across the council with the policy, but also the associated cost and the lost days of sickness. So I'd leave it there and I thank you for attending. I don't think you've got any comments to make before leaving us, uh, Adrian. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, we can do, we can certainly do that. Um, as I say, in, in response to I think it was Councillor Anderson's comments, you know, we have followed up and we'll continue to follow up with areas of of non-compliance identified. Um, but ultimately, the responsibility lies with the respective managers to uh, uh, to to comply with this policy. And but obviously, we will we will continue to. Uh, um, to to monitor and and uh, support and uh, chase managers where that hasn't happened. Okay, and if there are uh, repeating non-compliance, then I'd expect to see some form of an escalation arrangement to hold these people to account. Um, Adam, I can see a hand up. Yeah, yeah, it was just. Um uh, sort of a point of clar clarification, really. J just um, um, ha happy uh, with with everything that's been been said. Uh, it's just in relation to sickness and agency, and it's just making sure that that when we do that report and we bring that back, that we need to look at the difference between sickness projects and peak, and the sickness as in terms of long and short term sickness. Um, because obviously, you know, the short term sickness has come down. It's the long term sickness that's gone up. Um, and therefore, we can't easily um, respond through employing additional people for those kind of sickness. So, so there needs to be a little bit more nuancing around what we unpack in terms of getting that correlation between agency and sickness and what projects we have. So if we have a particular um, emergency, as we've had with COVID or we have with roads or, or buildings or so on, we will pull the agency workers in for that. So if we only look at the agency cost against sickness, we, we're not seeing the, the whole picture. So it, it was just to try and unpack that a little bit further to give the committee more detail around what we're truly using agency workers for. You find when you look at the figures, they, they're down to a limited number of areas, which should make that task easier. Um, OK, then, if there are no other comments or queries, Thank you for your input on that one. And um, we move on to uh, agenda item five, which are the fundamental audits, uh, the tracker report. Simon? Yeah, thank you, Chair, and Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you're all well. Um, so just to give you some context, this report gives a summary of the implementation status of the recommendations of the fundamental audits completed from 1920. Um, as you know, there are some key audits as is in 2.1, um, which are classed as fundamental, which are either done on an annual basis or too yearly, as you can see with the one or two next to the actual orders themselves. Um, so the orders that were completed in 1920 um, resulted in 68 recommendations being made. Um, and of those, as of the 18th of December 2020, which is the date of the follow up work, 55 had been completely implemented, which is 81%, um, and three weren't actually due to be implemented until year end. So of the total amount, 83% had been completed by the required deadline. Um, of those that haven't been completed, there were 11 recommendations as per 2.5, which had either been partly or not implemented. And the detail of those are listed in Appendix 3. And again, the report is fairly quite self-explanatory. So the ones that haven't been implemented or have been partly implemented were primarily in relation to NNDR or business rates, accounts receivable, um, and also accounts payable. So again, the detail of those that haven't been completed can be seen in Appendix 3. Um, again, some of the reasons for non-implementation were related to COVID um, and staff being um, you know, dedicated to their time to COVID responses and others, you know, as you can see, are due to capacity or um, project work. Um, again, I'm happy to take any questions um, from from committee. Thank you, Simon. Are there any questions, please, on this paper? 
No hands up? No? Can I thank you for the update, Simon? I, I did have a query on, on the, the paper, and particularly with the two um, subject areas that have the greatest number of recommendations. Uh, my query related is to where those areas are, are where they've not been implemented. Were they at the service um, areas or were they in the central element of the work? Because I was aware that these system processes have changed and they've moved from a central processing area to a devolved service area process. And I think we've had the conversation at the audit committee previously where the root cause of where the concerns and the weaknesses were raised, uh, we needed to pin down if that was at the centre or whether it's at the devolved areas. Um, so Nick was going to come back to me on that. Yeah, thanks Chair. And um, just to give you some, some idea, the processes that were updated to committee the last time, um, if you remember, we had Michelle and Sean come to committee, I think it was last sometime last year, to give you an update on what the process was and how those have been devolved to the service areas. In terms of the follow-up and the non-implementation, as per Appendix 3, the non-implementation is actually within the service, not within the departments. So the high-risk recommendation you can see there, primarily there's one high-risk and one medium-risk is, 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 is of concern really, and those are within the service, not within the devolved areas. OK. And will you be following that one in the future? Yeah, um, just to give members an update, the both the NNDR, um, AR and AP audits are now on an annual audit cycle um, because they've had uh, either a substantial or a moderate report previously, they are now due to be audited on an annual basis and both the um, AR and AP audits are ongoing for the current 2021 audit cycle and the re results of those audits will be fed back to committee in due course. So they are on an annual basis and we are undertaking them at the moment. Thank you. Julie, I can see your hand up. Could I ask in terms of the uh, the terms of reference for specifically the, the AR review, is it looking back to the individual services? Again, a root cause analysis to find out why um, uh, the, um, deaths are occurring and if there's anything that we can do at the start, um, bearing in mind that there will be guidelines and rules in place in terms of payments up front, but are deposits, uh, refundable deposits considered? Perhaps we can look at, at, the, at the very front end of the process rather than just looking at the, at the debt side of things, which is, is often too late. Yeah, thanks, Julie. We do look at the whole um, recovery process, um, but I think the audit does primarily focus on the, fu the function within the AR service area and also within the legal department in terms of the escalation of the debt. I can look at the programme, um, I know it's underway at the moment, to see if that is, is actually looking at the initial start of the AR process. Um, I can come back to you on that, but f from memory, okay. I think the audit itself does primarily focus on the function within AR as opposed to within the service area and the initial death cycle. Right, um, but if we could um, start looking at the at the service area themselves, it would minimise the the number of items that are coming through to AR. So it'll it'll help at the end of the process if we look at the at the beginning of the process. Yeah, I, I take that on board, Julia. I look at that with the with the order in question that's doing the review at the moment. And just also yeah. to give members an update, we do have um, a representative from the AR department due to, due to present in the next committee meeting in February. So if there are any further queries on the process, it might be worthwhile maybe making a note to the fact that we've got either Michelle or Sean due to attend in February's meeting to ask them any questions on this as well. Thank you for your contributions in that paper. I think we've had the conversation with what happens at the centre and what happens at service areas devolved um, previously, and I think that's already on the radar. Um, but it's important that we do keep the root cause visible so we've got some contact. So I support Julie's comments there. OK, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item six which is the election of the Order Committee representative on the annual governance group. Jeremy, taking this one? Yeah, just ask for nomination, basically, the report. Okay, well, um, the paper is self-explanatory. I think there were some queries at the last meeting regarding 
um, whether it was a rotation or whether it could be um, ended. And um, the members asked her to bring a paper back to the meeting today. So can we have nominations then as Jeremy's asking for a representative to sit on the governance group? Bear in mind that Councillor Leslie Walton sat on the governance group for the last 12 months and they've been taken an exceptional job in my view. But if we can ask for a nomination. So we start with Councillor Sir Anderson. Yeah. Um... Can I nominate uh, Leslie Walton back on as the representative? I'll second that. Sorry. Sorry. Councillor Sarah Anderson. Councillor Sarah Anderson. Who's, is it me or? Yeah, Councillor Jack Jones. Yes, thanks. Um, yes, you know, thanks for drawing up the papers. I think the, the answer is actually contained in there. Anyway, I want to nominate Peter Black. As I did last time. Terry Hennigan. Any second to that nomination? Yes, yeah, so we can have a vote, uh, Chairman, if I may. Uh, Paxton and Terry, so I'll second uh, Peter Black. Thank you. Um, so Terry Hennigan. Uh, I've supported uh, Leslie Wharton. Thank you. Yeah, Chair, before we have the vote, um, as I made a little statement there, I, th I think the answer was in the papers. It specifically mentions for one year only, not for only one year, but for one year only. To me, that's a clear statement that that uh, councillor or any councillor remains on it for one year only. So I'm, I'm a bit confused with regards to the legality of actually including um, the previous post holder actually in a port. Can I come back to that, Chair, please? I have uh, contacted um, legal. Yes, Jeff is right, one year only, but it doesn't stipulate in the minutes or what we stated in the last meeting, any respect uh, Leslie can reapply. Although it says one year only, it's one year only from start to finish. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Okay, we've got uh, number of ones up there. Uh, sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, you're breaking up so much I can't understand yeah. you. Sorry, Chair, perhaps I can confirm. Yes, um, Tracy Meredith has advised uh, members on, on this point. Although it was defined that the term would be one year, there is nothing prohibiting members from being re-elected for subsequent terms, but each term is reviewed after a year. So it just means that the review takes place and membership can change, but it doesn't necessarily preclude somebody from serving several terms. Um, having spoken to Tracy today, she said there's nothing stopping uh, two members being uh, appointed if, if that is uh, a, a matter that um, uh, committee prefer. Um, and if that um, resolves um, a situation where there's, you know, possibly some dispute. Can I speak, um, Chair? Thanks. Yes, thank you. Uh, thanks, Debbie, for that. You know, I think it's uh, the really, uh, you know, my thoughts around this really was that it, you know, it should be a, a transparent process and the more people that actually carry it out would benefit the process at the end of the day. And it would give people experience, you know, on uh, you know, what actually uh, goes on in the governance group and so on. Um, but the, you know, the uh, the idea with regards to having two people on it, I I got no opposition to that. Um, only really, <laughs> would you end up with two people from the same party on it? I think it'd be good really to have a, a mixture and a mixture of thoughts from people from, you know, the, the different parties actually on it. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, in in the sense that uh, it's already been said, I think it might be very sensible in this case to have both of the candidates on <coughs> carrying out the role. I think it would provide greater experience for us and uh, a greater range of knowledge as well. So that's got to be useful, I think. Okay. Um, so, Mike Lewis. 
Yes, if I may, Chair, um, it seems to me that uh, we've got uh, a bit of an impasse here and it really needs two votes. One, the first vote being whether there be one or two representatives on the governor's panel, or and then the second vote of who, who the, that person or those persons should be. Um, thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, can I turn to Jeremy to ask whether if you're happy to vote on whether you want so, um, two members on there. Okay, so shall we take the vote of if we want two? If we want two members. So if you can put your hands up for yes. those that Yes, sorry, sorry, Chair. You know, I actually did mention oh. what I mentioned there that if there are two members, they're not two members from the same party. They're not. I'm sure we wouldn't want to see two Liberals on there or two Conservatives or two Labour members. So I think, you know, one member from different parties. Okay. 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 This is for the two members then, if I can take the, the name vote. So, uh, Councillor Cyril Anderson. Against. That's for two members. Yeah, one member only, that's all I'm voting for. Uh, also Peter Black. I'm in favour of two members. Uh, Julie Davis. Uh, I would say just one member because it would um, uh, incur additional expenses for the council. David Two members. Councillor Terry Hanger. One member. Councillor Paxton Williams. I think two members, Chairman. Councillor Peter Jones. Uh, one member, Chair. Councillor Jeff Jones. Yeah, two members. Councillor Erica Kirchner. Uh, one member. Councillor Mike Lewis. Uh, one member. Chair. Um, two members. Uh, Councillor Sam Pritchard. I think one member has been sufficient, and so I'm happy to continue with that. Councillor Andrew Stevens. Yes, one member from each chair. Councillor Leslie Walton. One member. Councillor Mike White. One member, Chair. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, four. One, two, three, four, five against. Sorry, Chair, can I actually query something here, and perhaps as legal as well? How would we got a cabinet member actually voting on audit? No one member. I'm advising you. You are allowed one, one cabinet member on audit committee. What do you say? You are allowed one cabinet member on audit committee. Right. Ooh. Councillor Sam Pritchard, your hands up. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I was just going to make the, the the same point. When I was cabinet member, I was um, I retained my seat on audit. So you're allowed to have um, one cabinet member who sits on audit and votes in audit according to the rules. But you, I don't think you can have more than that. Okay, one of you said my life. Yeah. Um, right, so the, the, the vote's gone in favour of one member, and now we need to vote on the individuals. Yes. So we've got two names put forward. Yeah. That's Leslie Walton and Sir Peter Black. Mm, okay. So if we can vote for one of them. Okay, so I'll go through the name vote again on the first one, Councillor Leslie Walton. Uh, just to indicate four against your abstention. Uh, Councillor Cyril Anderson. Four. Councillor Peter Black. I shall vote for myself. <laughs> Councillor uh, Jim Davis. Abstention. Councillor David Halliwell. Uh, we're voting for Leslie Walton first, are we? Yes. Well, that, 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 that makes no sense. Yeah. 
Sorry, Peter. Peter, you have Yeah, sorry, sorry. You should you should have a vote for one or the other. You can't just then vote for one. It makes no sense. It should be one against the other, not you know, four against an individual. Okay. okay. Yeah, I put them side by side. Um, yeah. So, David Hedler. Peter Black, I vote for. Leslie Walton. Councillor Pastor Todd Williams. Peter Black. Councillor Peter Jones. Councillor Walton. Councillor Jeff Jones. Uh, Peter. Councillor Eric Kirshner. Councillor Leslie Walton. Councillor Mike Ewell. Councillor Leslie Walton. Uh, chair? As, they, as the chair, I think I'll abstain on this one. Uh, Councillor Sam Pritchard. Leslie Walton. Councillor Andrew Stevens. Councillor Walton. Uh, Councillor Leslie Walton. Me. Uh, Councillor Mike White. I vote for Councillor Leslie Walton. Was nine for Councillor Leslie Walton, four for Councillor Peter Black, and two abstentions. So, yeah. Okay, okay so the, the vote's gone for Councillor Leslie Walton, and I would suggest that the turn be fixed again for one year. Or do the right of the um, council for the council ends in 15 months? Yeah. Are you happy for it to run to the end of the council in 15 months, or would you want it to be fixed for one year? I, I, think, I think, Chair, it makes sense to run it to the end of the council in 15 months. Mm -hmm. Is that generally supported by hands? Yeah, can I clarify as well? Can you actually include the word only after it, please? Very well. <laughs> pedantic today. Councillor Sarah Anderson, yeah. Yeah, just showing my uh, approval of uh, the last statement. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Councillor Anderson. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm voting for yes. Two, up to the statement. Who did that? Have we Councillor got the polling? Have, have we got the voting post process on this yet? <laughs> Sorry, Chairman. I was just supporting what Peter said. Thank you for that. And thank you, Councillor Leslie Walton, for continuing with the, the, the work, yeah. the good work that you're doing on the on the game. Um, right, so the next agenda item, which is um, Ben's paper on the budget, capital budget model, revenue capital budget model. Ben. Thank, thank you, Chair. As this is only an information item, I don't pr propose to uh, speak to the report in itself, but we'll be more than happy to take any questions if there are any. This is the report that went to Cabinet in December as the second quarter position, delayed a month in the cycle because of um, us waiting for reclaims from Welsh Government. It will also be considered at scrutiny tomorrow, the scrutiny panel for finance and performance as part of uh, normal business and all the, that scrutiny panel will also be reviewing the budget proposals. So I don't propose to talk further other than to draw your attention to it, take questions. It's on because um, the finances of the council remain under duress, as do they do for all of local government with the impact of COVID. So um, I will pause at that point, Chair. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Peter Black, can you comment, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I understand this is a second quarter report. We are now in the fourth quarter, and obviously the third quarter report isn't available yet. Is there any indication that this £10 million deficit is being clawed back um, over the third quarter at all? I will choose my words carefully, but uh, I'll start with a blanket. Yes, um, I, I, part of the reason for delaying a cycle, and it's not ideal, I accept that in terms of the first and second quarter. Having said that, the third quarter will go to Cabinet in February, which is its normal timing. It goes at the same time as ultimately Cabinet makes its final recommendations to Council. But yes, there is indication that that amount 
of gap is being clawed back and we are becoming more successful in reclaiming sums from the Welsh Government. It's a byproduct of them taking up to three months to, to, to sort out each claim. There's a sort of tranched basis and uh, it's a very unusual year when we're not being given direct allocations of specific grant which gives me assurance of what I'm getting. It is as I've unfortunately colloquially referred to before a bit of a beauty parade with every other council trying to seek sums from the same limited pot but yes I can give an indication that uh, that there are inroads being made and cabinet will be advised accordingly when the third quarter comes and you'll get an opportunity to see that here at audit committee and at scrutiny in due course councillor black so so if we have that lag does that mean the final accounts are going to be delayed until we can tie up all those grant um, applications I, i'm hoping not um i would point out that i think we were the earliest council to close last yeah, we were, yeah. Accounts. Yeah. and again there are likely to be provisions which allow for deferral of the accounts my planning assumption is that we will continue to go early i have however raised with welsh government officials and have raised with the society of welsh treasurers that that only works for those of us that manage to close our accounts in may if we don't have a three-month time lag for these these claims in arrears where they're not grants so welsh officials welsh government officials have indicated that they understand that position and so as long as that hurdle is crossed i do not anticipate delaying the the the, the production of the accounts for swansea okay thank you, thank you. councillor paxton hood williams Thank you, Madam Chairman. A quick uh, question on Appendix mm -hmm. 1, if I may. Um, uh, under the Directorate Expenditure, you have a line which says support to local businesses, uh, Western Morgan COVID grants. Is that where we've been acting as agents and paying the money in that respect? Or uh, is that any money that we've decided to spend ourselves in support of businesses? The 51,500, basically. Yeah, the £51 million, pounds, yes, that line is entirely us only acting as agent of Welsh Government. I have chosen in year to show those tranche payments, and you'll see in the third quarter, Councillor Paxton Hood-Williams, that it will be even higher again. It is likely that come the final accounts, only the net figure will be reported, because that seems to be the view of the Auditor General for Wales, that we are merely acting as agent for government. As you'll be aware, it's a sort of reversal of the polarity of what normally happens with non-domestic rates, where we collect it below the line and we only get a, sort of an adjustment for the, the, the difference between the two. So I expect an outturn, there'll only be a one line a net, but that's particularly entry you refer to, Councillor. Um, yes, is on an agency basis. It does not include any sums that we have chosen to top up. Any sums that we have chosen to top up are reported in the cost of services in those upper lines. I've chosen to show it separately to make clear that it's not decision made by the council it's where we're acting as agent i would indicate however of course that we um are one of the fastest paying councils and i'm aware of some media reporting today on the bbc that there are issues again in england with some some businesses not getting their grants that uh, are perceived to be at a particularly fast time but we remain in the top three in wales for volume value of payments made out on these business grant schemes <coughs> Thank you, Ben. That just clarifies a point for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jeff Jones. Yes, <clears throat> not many people call me Jeffrey Jones. Anyway, Ben, you know, with these business grants, and, uh, you know, I take my hat off the speed you've actually uh, sent the money out and so on, but what are the terms of the grants? <clears throat> these monies have to be paid back at a certain point, and will we be involved in actually you know, chasing that money up to get the money back from businesses? Uh, by way of clarification, the grants that we are administering are not, they are genuinely grants, they are not repayable. As you're aware, there are a raft of different schemes which operate Pan UK and also some sub variants that operate in Wales. There are a number of business grant support schemes through the Economic Resilience Fund, which are administered by Business Wales, which are effectively some loan elements and some grant elements, and the loan elements are due to be repaid. In the same way, the UK sponsored C Bill scheme and a raft of others are loans to be repaid. But for the avoidance of doubt, the sums that we have advanced under the business grant scheme and the reliefs under business rates and also the discretionary schemes are truly, in the sense, grants and are not required to be repaid other than if our fraud detection and our internal audit checking identifies any payments that we suspect to be fraudulent error or omission, we will seek to recover those, but they are genuinely grants in the in, in the normal definition, as it were, Councillor Jones. Okay, thanks. Councillor Sarah Anderson. 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, ben, uh, Jeff did ask the question I was going to ask, but I think, Chair, um, Ben and his team should be congratulated with the, with the speed that they've got these grants out to help these, uh, especially the small businesses that could have gone under. So I think it's a big uh, slap on the back for Ben and his team for his quick response. I totally support that, uh, Councillor Anderson. I think the, the team has done remarkably well in the situation that they faced. And, um, you know, it's impressive to see Swansea at the forerunner of, of all this positivity, although we're in a, a dying position with, with the virus. Councillor Leslie Walton. Can I just echo what um, Councillor Anderson said? I, I think. Uh, we really do uh, owe a big thank you to Ben and his team, and I'd like to see that minuted. Thank you. Thank you. I totally agree. Are there any other questions on this paper? Quite clearly, it, it's a very well written paper, it's clear, um, and it's a case of scrutiny. We'll have uh, probably a closer look at it uh, when it goes to the scrutiny committee tomorrow. And I'm sure Councillor Peter Bath will update the audit committee if there's anything. Of particular concern that emerges from that for the audit committee's attention. It's, it's going to a panel chair, so I think Chris Holly chairs that particular panel. That, that's correct, Councillor Black. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. If there are no other questions on um, on that paper, thank you again, Ben, and thank you to the team. Um, and if we can now move on to the thank audit, you. the audit committee tracker report. Um, again, this is just. Um, the tracker to ensure that all actions that we are tasking officers of the council um, to progress are actually being completed. Um, I would just like to point out that outside of the meeting, there's been a number of papers circulated to members that are of significance, and I would just look for support to bring an update back to a future meeting around the. Um, update on the Corporate Joint Committee, which was circulated, an update on the recovery plan, notwithstanding that Councillor Peter Black and the Scrutiny Committee are giving focus to that recovery plan. But I would like to receive a formal update for the Audit Committee um, if there are any issues that are, are of concern from scrutiny. And also the uh, paper on the sickness and agency, which we've all already identified. And I don't know if there are any other areas um, where the members of the audit committee would wish any of those topics to come back that have been circulated outside of the meeting. If there are, perhaps you could let Jeremy know and we can add them to a future work plan. I don't know if anybody's got any comments or if they can circulate that. Julie Davis. <laughs> Sorry, uh, can I just query? We've been asked to respond to the Welsh Government consultation on part six of the bill, Director Richard Rowlands. Would you prefer as chair for any comments to come via yourself so that you can collate a single response from audit committee? Um, if the response could go through to Jeremy, um, and then I can meet with Jeremy to review that. Okay, I've already returned my to Richard Rowland so uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, Richard's got them apparently, so we can get them from Richard directly. I'm being told. So I will review those and um, and, and perhaps come back to you as to what they contain and whether we need to receive them at a future audit committee meeting. Thank you. Um, so if, this, if there are any of those papers that have been circulated outside of the meeting that have got any concerns for members, perhaps you could let Jeremy know and then we can add them to a future work programme. Um, so if there are no further questions on that paper, I think the final item on the agenda is um, the audit com committee work plan. And that's for information, so there are no, no queries or comments on the work plan. Um, then I'd like to bring the meeting to a close.
And can I thank everyone for their participation today? Apologies if there were any technical issues with sound. Um, perhaps Jeremy can have a look at that for the next meeting. Um, and please stay safe, everyone, and keep well. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.